Hi guys, I'm Luke and today we're going to look at methods 3-4 and we're going to go over a bit of the unit circle and how it works. So a lot of students struggle with this area of uh, circular functions because they don't actually understand what's going on in the background. Okay, so pretty much we're going to start out with just a circle. Okay, and why it's called the unit circle is because it has radius 1 and that's going to be a really important point. Okay, so it has radius 1 so we basically draw a triangle on the inside as you can see in the diagram. We split our triangle up into its vertical and horizontal component with the vertical being y and the horizontal being x and these are the distances. And so pretty much we just use our basic trigonometry. So we use Sokotoa, so sine is opposite on hypotenuse, cos is adjacent on hypotenuse and tan is opposite on adjacent to basically find out these values. So we can relate sine of theta as being opposite on hypotenuse, so y over 1. Okay, because y is the opposite and 1 is the hypotenuse. Now we can rearrange this and get that y is equal to sine of theta. So, basically the vertical height of that triangle is going to be our sine of theta. Next, we take cos of theta and that's going to be adjacent on hypotenuse. So that's going to be x on 1. And once again we can rearrange that so that x is equal to cos of theta. So this is basically why when we talk about the unit circle, our horizontal value is sine of theta and our vertical is cos of theta. Okay, now to find tan, tan is equal to sine on cos as we all should remember. And so basically tan theta is going to be y on x. So basically the gradient of that angle. Now next we're going to be talking about some complementary angles and how that works, how we can rearrange this unit circle to do some cool things. So basically we can move this triangle and so in moving this triangle hopefully we can all see that is the same triangle. Okay, It's got one side which is of y length and one side which is of x length. It's just basically this triangle that's sort of been shifted. Okay, So now we can see that this angle theta has now become pi on 2 minus theta because we always measure our angles from the positive direction of the x-axis. We get another triangle there and then we can keep these distances x and y and move them over. Now we can use this triangle to find out what the values are going to be. So sine of pi on 2 minus theta is going to be equal to x. Okay, Remember sine is that vertical distance. Cos of pi on 2 minus theta, the horizontal distance is going to be y. And tan of pi on 2 minus theta is going to be, well, sine of pi on 2 minus theta over cos of pi on 2 minus theta, so x on y. So now we can see that sine of pi on 2 minus theta is equal to cos of theta. And cos of pi on 2 minus theta is equal to sine of theta. These are our complementary angles. So we're basically using what we found earlier and sort of Re rearranging it, shifting our triangle and finding out what sine of pi on 2 minus theta is and cos and tan as well. So finally tan is going to be cos of theta on sine of theta. Okay, so that's pretty much how we find our complementary angles. Okay, this is something that a lot of students struggle with because they just don't understand how the unit circle works but it's a really good idea to take the time and understand what's going on in the background. Thank you.